and welcome back to the Turdford channel. All right, today's video is on elastic collisions where there's no final velocity. Matter of fact, we might even use the word a perfect elastic collision because what we're going to be inferring in this video that there is no loss of energy in this problem. Uh, and we're going to be using a specific equation to make this work, and I've already made a video on how to derive that equation. But so far, you're used to situations like this, where you have two balls rolling each other and hitting each other. And it'll usually give you like a M1 and a M2, as we see here. In this case, the balls are rolling at each other. So this would be like V1 initial equals, and we'll go with 3 meters per second. I'm getting to make up the numbers because it's my question. And let's say that M2 is equal to, I don't know, V2 initial Let's give it a velocity of, mm, I don't know, 5 meters per second. Now, already something is wrong on my paper. When you're doing these problems, you got to always be concerned with these are vectors. Velocities are vectors. It means they need a direction. So this ball is rolling backwards. So we need to make sure to know that it's going to have a negative 5 meter per second velocity. We know that these two balls are going to hit, but after they collide, we don't know what's going to happen. Are they going to bounce and go separate directions? Will the one moving faster hit and not? Will they both end up going in the same? You know, there's no way we can really tell. Now, sometimes these problems are really sweet, and they give you matching masses, which would be true with these uh, billiard balls. Uh, if you had matching masses, it'd be awesome because the masses would cancel out. Let's let's just go straight for the problem. Here we go. M1, V1 initial, plus M2, V2 initial equals, in this case, it's a hit and bounce. So M1, V1 final, plus M2, V2 final. So there's our equation. And again, if these masses are the same, it becomes beautiful. All the masses would cancel out. Uh, I'm going to make the masses different. Maybe somebody's cheating and the eight ball is actually a heavier ball. I don't know why that would happen, but let's go through and just say that the eight ball weighs 20 grams, and let's say that M1 weighs 10 grams. So let's work the problem with a different M1 and M2. Now, right off the bat, you might be looking at this going, uh, Mr. Cole, uh, our masses are in the wrong units. I can actually work an MV question with these units because it's kind of like a glorified proportion here if you want to look at it that way. Let's just go ahead and do this. Let's just plug the numbers right in. M1, 10. This is actually a very easy problem. Times 3 plus M2 is... 20 times V2 is negative 5 equals, and now you're about to see the problem. M1, 10 V1 F plus M2, which is 20 V2 F. Here's the problem. You have two unknowns. You don't know V1 or V2 F. You know either of these, which means two equations means we have two unknowns. If you watch another video... I derive an equation, and this will be that equation. Are you ready? V1 initial plus V1 final equals V2 initial plus V2 final. And this equation only has one circumstance for use, working this problem. And if you want to see how I derive this, it's through conservation of energy. But anyway, and so we can do that because no... Say it again, no energy is lost in this problem. That's what makes it work. So can we use this equation in combination with what we've done? Well, yeah, it gave us our V1 initial. V1 initial was 3. V1 final, we do not know. And then equals V2 initial, which was, ooh, my screen is jiggling, negative 5 plus V1 final. Y'all, the physics is over. I have two equations and two unknowns, so this works. I just need to solve one of these equations. I'm going to solve this guy down here for V1F. It's already basically solved. So I'm going to add 5 to both sides. So I'll have 8 plus V1 final equals. 
And on the other side, please notice I've screwed up. Where that says V2 final, that should still be V2 final here. And so that will be equal to V2 final. And now all I'm going to do is take, you've seen me do this a gazillion times, I'm going to take this equation and substitute it into this equation. So let's see if we can solve this equation. Uh, 10 times 3, let's... That would be 30. Uh, 20 times negative 5 would be negative 100, which means the whole left side of this, we've got negative 70 equals 10 V1F. Now we're going to have to do a little substitution here. Plus 20 times 8 plus V1F. And see if I can clean that up. There. Uh, I'm going to actually do something. I'm going to take this and I'm going to drag it down. Oh, are you not going to let me drag? Extend my page, good sir. I want to look at this one where I've got plenty of room to do it. So there is our equation. We need to distribute this section here. So we've got negative 70 equals 10 V1F. Uh, let's see, plus 20 times 8 would be plus 160 plus 20 V1F. We need to get everything moving correctly here. So let's do this. Let's subtract 160 from each side. Subtract 160, so this would be negative 230 equals, that's a funny looking equal sign I've just drawn, 230 equals 10 and 20 makes 30 V1F. And now we'll go to our Casio ES-115 calculator. You know, my show really should be sponsored by Casio. 230 divided by 30 equals 7.7, .7, essentially. So I'm going to go ahead and write 7.7, .7, which actually is a wrong answer. You do notice this negative 1. That means that this is a actual or negative 230. So this is a negative 7.7. .7. V1 final is, so that is my V1 final. V1 final is negative 7.7. .7. That means after this ball hits, V1 final is negative 7.7. .7. This ball is going to hit and go the opposite direction. Well, we still need to find V2 final. What's going to happen to this guy? Is it going to hit and bounce back, or is it going to continue to go forward, or at least in the direction it's going? All we got to do is substitute into this equation we've already made. So we know that this is going to be, it's going to almost stop. Check this out. What we got here? 8 V1 final is negative 7.7, .7, so minus 7.7 .7 equals V2F which means 0.3 meters per second is V2F. Do you understand what that means? It means after they hit, the larger of the balls would actually hit and go very slowly in the opposite direction because it came out with a positive answer so it's going to end up moving to the right and a lot of times these questions especially if you're taking a physics test and it's multiple choice it'll ask you like right or left in your answer to actually write that and so anyway though but that is literally it so when you're working a problem a perfect elastic a collision you still use your mv mv equation here, I'm writing it all out. I know I never do this. And I mess that up. That's initial, initial, M1, V1, final, plus M2, V2, final. And then all you use is this equation with it. V1, initial, plus V2, initial. Oops, I screwed that up. V1, initial, plus, say it with me, V1, final, equals V2, initial, plus V2, final. You use those two equations, you usually solve that one and substitute the end. And again, if you're working a problem that says that the masses, if the masses are all the same, then awesome. You can mark all the masses out of the problem. 
But anyway, I hope this kind of cleans up your life a little in this regard. And uh, I guess if I was going to say anything else, it would be Octum. And thus concludes the extent of my German knowledge. But anyway, thank you. Peace out, love, and everything else. Later. Bye.